<clears throat> hey, I wanted to pop on here for a moment and talk about oppression. Sometimes, you know, we get to feeling frustrated. You know, it's this hunger on the inside, you know, that we can't get things done or things ain't flowing the way we think they should flow. You know, that's the pressure, the pressure of life. Sometimes it's caused by oppression and we don't, we're not able to realize it because we're so engulfed in what we're trying to do or we so thinking about what we trying to get to accomplish in the time frame that we trying to accomplish or seemingly just to get things to move. Um, oppression in the mind spikes the fight or flight syndrome, which means either you're going to keep fighting, which is which a lot of us is doing is we trying to keep fighting to get this thing to happen or we're going to flight, We're going to let go and we're just going to move away from it. When life gives you too much pressure, you need to make room. You need to make space. You need to take inventory in your life to see what is actually the problem or to find the actual solution. In my instance, I have a lot on my plate. And I've started, matter of fact, the beginning of the year, downsizing and taking some things out that really don't need to be in my life right now. Um, I pick and choose my battles. You know, for me, when my blood sugar rises, I know that something is too much because, you know, God is not going to put on us more than we can bear. So I take inventory of why my life is my health and my things are taking place in my life the way they're taking place in my life. And I start to move stuff. I start to get stuff out of the way. Um, as a single mom, I got to be a mom. There ain't nothing I can do. Um, I got to take care of my children. That's a given. That's, you know, an inevitable. That's not something that I can just remove. Even my boys, my boys are grown. But still, just because they get grown don't mean we stop raising them up and training them in the way that they go. Um, my baby boy, he's learning to drive. So therefore I still have to be Uber <laughs> when I can't put him on the bus or pay for an Uber. And right now I can't pay for an Uber because I'm still living in some mess that was created in the beginning of the year. You know, I don't associate with certain people that constantly find I find myself in certain situations with anymore but it's still taking this long to come out of that situation um I need to get more focused on what to do and how to get this situation accomplished and get my bills back up the way they were bills paid on time is not good enough for me bills paid up a month or two in advance is good enough for me so I'm still on that borderline. I'm still dealing with stuff, you know. I don't have time to just sit and relax, you know. I got to fight to get my life back to where I feel comfortable it is supposed to be. So, therefore, I have to take inventory of my life to see what's working and what's not. What can move, what can be put on hold, what can be delayed. Um... I took another leave of absence from school because school ain't what I need to do right now. I need to make sure my bills is taken care of in the manner that I like them taken care of. Um, I don't need another degree on the wall right now anyway. As far as ordinations, I really don't need another ordination on the wall. Um... I'm really not doing anything. I'm really not teaching as much. In fact, I taught more when I first became ordained in 2015 than I have been doing the last three to five years. So 
I'm kind of doing what I need to do. I'm kind of stepping back from that. Um, I'm really not needed right now. My focus should be on my household, my children. So I'm probably going to pile up my my weekends, you know, helping people. Ministry is out there. Helping the, you know, I'm in, I'm credentialed with Medicaid. Ministry is out there. These people need help. These people need assistance. Not so much I'm doing it for the money, but I can do more ministry out there than I can waiting on my turn to stand on the soapbox. So I'm going to get more involved in my field of mental health. So that means I'm going to fight to keep what I know needs to be done. And I'm going to let go of some things that I desire. But, you know, that's putting them on hold, I guess. But when you're dealing with oppression, it comes to show you something. It comes to, you know, you, you got you to gotta find balance. If there's no balance, then stuff going to either explode or fall over. My blood sugar is like a meter to me. It means I'm doing too much or it shows I'm doing too much. I'm not a person that worry. I'm a person that gets the resolution, get things done, and go on by my business. I don't sit and fester over stuff. Um, I pretty much stay to myself, which I like, because that's less drama I got to deal with. And then because, you know, people don't understand what they're not used to, they don't, you know, they look at you different. They put you in these categories and these boxes, and I don't have time for that. Yeah, I got to do me, and I got to do my household. I got to make sure my house, my ministry, my household is my first ministry. Make sure that's together, regardless of whatever anybody think or say. Um, I'm always going to do me. I'm always going to be mom, take care of my children. Now, many me be 18 next year. Next, Well, this year on, on November. After that, I don't know what I'm going to do. But after that, I'll be free to, to travel or do whatever I want to do, I guess. But I need to start building that nest egg now. Um, I took on life insurance. I'm um, getting my life insurance license to be able to write policies. And I like this one because it's connected to mutual funds, which is on like a guaranteed recession proof thing. It's at 12% right now. I'm starting to invest in some more money into that as far as the mutual fund side and building up wealth. You know, I'm teaching my children, you know, about mutual funds right now. So that by they by the time they get to be my age, they'll be millionaires. So I'm always doing something. I'm always trying to give my children or give my community something that I didn't have, that I had to fight to get to. I had to fight to become Dr. Bell. I had to fight to be, with all to get all those degrees and to be educated as I am. I couldn't run around and, you know, hang out and socialize and everything in order to get where I am today. Because socializing they wouldn't do wouldn't put me in a position that I am today. I'm able to keep the roof over my head. I'm able to, you know, make income while I sleep, you know, certain things like that. I love to teach. I love, you know, classes. I love to teach, you know, I do the, the ministries or the conferences in the, you know, outside in the city, you know, because a lot of people don't feel comfortable to come to the church. So I do the conferences like the last one I did at uh, East Los 
No, it's the East. Yeah, it was the East Las Vegas Recreation Center. I did that one. And, I, you know, other conferences, you know, I plan on doing women conferences and stuff like that. I plan on, you know, teaching what I know, you know, showing what I know, and like a one-stop shop thing. I, you know, things that I know out of all the books that I've read and all the seminars and, you know, webinars that I've been through, the things that work in my life, in my house to keep me, you know, my household running. I just love to teach and I kind of look back and I really haven't taught the way I like teaching since, oh God, before 2018. You know, I've been in situations where I wasn't allowed to teach. So I want to get back to my love. One of my first loves is teaching. You know, pouring out what God has put into me. So I don't know if I'm going to do it on Zoom or or what, but probably my YouTube channel. <laughs> but I got to go around here and do what I need to do to take care of my household. I can't sit around in fear of a pandemic. I can't sit around just to be sitting around. I got to lay some stuff aside off my table in order to get my living situation back to where I feel comfortable to where I want it to be. And then see what thus saith the Lord. Anyway, I just wanted to come on here and let somebody know how to deal with oppression. Find out what's oppressing you. Find out what needs to be done. Do you need to fight a little harder? You, or if you do, you need a strategy to be more strategic in your fight. Or sometimes you just need to let some things go. Maybe it's not time. Maybe you're just going against something or going for something that you're not ready for. Or it's just not the time to go, go for it. I, you know, I got to let some things go. I got all them degrees and doctorate on the wall and all the ordinations on the wall. And none of them is, is doing anything for me right now. So I need to set some things aside and allow that to start working in my life for me and be able to help others at the same time. So that's where I'm being oppressed at is my bit. I'm not able, I got all this knowledge, but I'm not able to do anything with it. So it's time to, you know, lay, lay aside some things. Anyway, I just wanted to pop on here. I hadn't been on here a while. I've been letting people preach and teach for me. <laughs> I've been taking a break, a sabbatical a little bit, but um, I'm back on the ball. I just left an individual. I, you know, saw an individual and got, you know, excited again about what I do. I just had a talk with wisdom, you know, young ladies older than me. And we just had a, a talk of wisdom. And, you know, out of my education and, and my experience, I was able to share with her some things in order to help her in her situation. And I just love to give. I'm finna load up my car full of food out of my food pantry, my nonprofit. That's another thing. It's just sitting there. I haven't done anything with my nonprofit since mm, last year. You know, I was able to take care of some utility bills and stuff like that. And uh, matter of fact, it was before I had that experience. As y'all know, if I tell I say what the experience was, they shut me out. But um, it was before I had that experience. I haven't really done anything with my nonprofit. It's just been sitting there on paper. So it's time for me to get back into doing what I need to do with my nonprofit and be able to help some people. That's what I love to do is give. I love to help people. You know, people that appreciate what you do, you know, not because they're entitled, but people that appreciate. You know, I'm not a self righteous person. God deposits a lot into me because he know he can get it through me. So I'm going back 
to doing my nonprofit. You know, I'm going back to the things that give me life. Um, in places where I can flow. I can't flow and I'm restricted in areas. I was talking to somebody the other day. They noticed my YouTube channel. My name, they said for the last two messages, I guess I preached, I looked like I was reading from a paper, which I was. And they asked me, when did I start doing that? I said, well, I was trying to be obedient and sit, set everything within the time frame. You know, I'm a, I'm a team player, but I didn't like it. I, I know me. I didn't like it. I didn't like feeling the anxiety, you know, of, you know, the time ending the buzzer. I like to flow, you know, out of the Holy Spirit to just flow, you know. So I just, I'm going to do my nonprofit. Just thinking about it just brings my heart joy. Um, I really and truly love talking to that young lady today. I call her a young lady, but she is what she almost she's a decade my senior at least. <laughs> but I love wisdom. I love talking to wisdom. And I just wanted to pop on here and talk about oppression. Don't let oppression get you down. And you know, the pressure. You know, in order to stop being pressed, you need to make sure, you know, is it something that you need to fight for more? You know, pick and choose your battles. If it's not something you need to fight for, maybe it's a distraction. Maybe it's something that's in your in the way of trying to keep you from doing or getting the things that you need. Maybe God trying to tell you, look, you got too much on your plate. So learn from the oppression. Learn from the emotions and the the your health condition. They trying to tell you something. You know, I had to stop eating so much of that that sodium stuff. <laughs> and junk food. Because everything on me was swelling up. My ankles and everything. I ain't young as I used to be. I'm about feeling every bit of this 51. <laughs> but like I say, Learn to notice the signs in your spirit. Discern the spirit. Discern the signs in your body. You know, discern the signs in your mind. God is trying to tell you something. He's trying to get some information to you, but you're not listening because he's not audible all the time. He don't so much give it to somebody that can come to you and speak to you. Learn to hear from God from yourself, for yourself, through yourself. You got to get in your word, you know, to know his voice, how he responds. He can speak to you through a billboard, you know. So I'm going to, yeah, just start doing what I love to do. I was telling somebody that was a young lady that was running around in my gated community. I've seen that SUV several times. And I never paid no attention to it, but yesterday, or was it the day before? Yeah, yesterday, I paid attention to it. And it was a young lady. She would just part and make it look like, you know, she part of the community. And she would just go to sleep. One of us. Mm -mm, I couldn't let that happen. So I made sure she, you know, to have food. And I'm looking for a lot of places to stay for people. I was just able to get the roof over two men's heads. You know, they're going to roommate together. I was able to accomplish that with a two-bedroom apartment. So, God is good. He's just moving. He's doing things. I mean, sometimes, I know these men wanted their own apartment, but sometimes you got to settle for some things. You know, fight or fight. Pick and choose your battles. You know, it's you know, I know that they wanted their own, but you know, at least it's better than what it was. And it ain't in no whole group community where people may have COVID or anything like that. They have their own living space. They just share maybe the kitchen and the bathroom. That's it. So God is moving. He's still in control. Like I said, oppression comes to tell you something. The children of Israel was oppressed 
God led them to oppression to squeeze some things out of them. Even when he delivered them, some things wasn't squeezed out of them. He kept them going. And at the end of it, he waited until stuff died off. People died off. And then he crossed them over the River Jordan into the promised land. So find out what oppression is for. Find out why it come to you. Find out the message. Learn the lesson that it come to you. Anyway, till next time, stay blessed.